Hey everyone, I'm Todd Stevens. And I'm Ross Murray. You're watching the Verse series by StarCityGames.com. Welcome back to another new week here on the Versus series, leading up into SEG at Worcester this weekend, where we're going to see Core Set 19 have an impact on the constructed formats for the first time. So this week, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying out some Core Set 19 brews in both standard and modern, because that's usually like where the new sets like have the most impact on, as yep. opposed to legacy, as opposed to legacy with it being the team event. And uh, we're going to be putting them up against like some tough matchups from like the previous uh, format. So, like for example, today I'm going to be playing uh, Grixis Midrange, which I think is going to be a really good deck for for week one. But we're going to put it putting up against Mono Red, or I guess Red Black. Right? Yes. Yeah, Red Black. Red Black. Yeah. But a Chain Whirler deck, so the Boogeyman from the previous format. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're really putting Core Set 19 to the test here, rather than sort of jam some brews against each other and try to figure out, well, is this deck good or was this other deck just bad? We're just playing the new decks against the old decks and see if they can stack up. Because we know that this red-black deck is great. It's been the, essentially the best deck from the previous standard format. So we'll see if uh, Nicole Bolas and friends can uh, take down little Curly Whirly here. Yeah. And uh, a lot of these, these uh, established decks that we're playing, it doesn't look like there's a ton of new cards for it, even like red-black, you know? Like when we're looking at the, the previews and yeah, stuff. Red already has like 17 playable mythics. Yeah. So I don't think it <laughs> needed any more. Right. I'm kind of happy it didn't get another <laughs> awesome card, so I, I'm pretty sure Goblin Chain Whirler will do just fine. Yeah, and so so this could definitely be a matchup you could see there on week one. So we're going to be doing three standard and two modern this week. We'll just be alternating standard on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and modern on Tuesday, Thursday with some uh, new brews. And so let's let's uh, see how Corset 19 you know holds up against like these decks that we know are good already. Let's do it. Okay. Poker hand? Yep. And roll five dice. Ooh, setting yourself up. Yeah, that's, a, that's an optimistic. I got okay, three of a kind. I got oh, I got two pairs. I thought my two pairs was gonna be good. Yeah, not good enough. Three, three, kind? three ones. Okay, all right. You get to go first. Corset nineteen already losing. <laughs> this could be a tough week for the corset nineteen cards because, like we said, we didn't put it up against particularly great matchups. Okay, uh, on the play here, this card is definitely great, and we've got some ways to draw the game up before we get to our heavy hitters, so I think this is a keep. So playing in the tournament, if I'm, you know, registering this at SG Worcester, I don't, you know, you don't know what you're playing against with game one, and this is definitely a hand I would keep uh, immediately, uh, but in this matchup, especially on the draw, may not be what we want at all. Okay, Bowmat Courier. It's kind of the problem with playing uh, mid-range decks, is sometimes you just have the wrong half of your deck game one. Yep, that's why I don't play them very often. You're a 19. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, you know, we could... So if we, if we play the... Like, if we go with the Magma Spray here, then we're going to have a tap land on turn two, and then we're not really doing anything on turn two. So I think there's a better chance that we can, on turn three, be able to play a two-drop plus Magma Spray, hopefully, and so I'm going to lead with the tap land now. Of course, we need another land for that, but... Okay, not a bad draw. Uh, let's mush and trigger the Bowmat Courier. You go to 18. Yep. Pass the turn. Okay. So, Ross uh, did not play anything, so with the red decks, that's usually just Lightning Strike or a Braid. So it's, it's very likely that Ross will be having some kind of removal spell here, so if we just play our creature out, it's probably just going to get removed. So I think instead I'm going to just hold up our removal and uh, pass the turn. Okay. Attack, trigger, bow, my carrier. Yep, I'm going to take it, go down to 17. Pass the turn. Okay, so I wanted to see if there was a chain whirler where we could use that. There was not, so I think now I'm, I'm good to just go ahead and use this magma spray. Yep. Even though it, we're not using our two mana removal spell because that one could be more valuable later. All right, come on, land. Woo, barely getting there. Okay. Either hub. Now... Since we know we're playing against Mono Red again, these aren't going to do a whole lot. Let's let's just try to keep digging. So we're going to use our one blue. Sure. Champion of Wits. Draw two and discard. Ooh. Okay. So these are the th these are the three cards that I 
don't like the most in, in our hand right here. I think Siphoner is probably the worst out of these. The thing I do like about Siphoner, it does give us an energy for our Aether Hub. Um, but I think I'm just going to get rid of both of these Siphoners. The reason why I like Bloodfast is because even if you don't have to activate it, whenever you get to 5 life or less, you can just flip it, get another land, and then start gaining life by sacrificing creatures. So gaining life is usually pretty good. Let's get rid of these Siphoners. Okay. Uh, given the texture of my hand, I don't think this Champion Wits is going to really interact with me, so I'm just going to ignore it rather than put it in the graveyard for Todd to bring back. And... Let's go with a Rekindling Phoenix. Okay. Last turn. Still looking for more lands. Oh, all right, well, it's getting, this is not the, the best scenario. This is not a Vrasic's Contempt turn? Uh, Nope. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, so the champion didn't find us a land, and we still don't, don't have another one. Um, we did find another champion, but now we don't have energy. I guess... So Jacob could, Baugh has abandoned you. Yeah, he really has. <laughs> I guess we could go with the, just throw the blood fast out there, or we could hold up removal spell. I guess we'll just hold up removal spell, and no reason to attack the champion into the phoenix. So go ahead. No reason to use a removal spell now, because the phoenix will just come back on upkeep. Okay. Well, Jacob Ball has not abandoned me, so lucky. Uh, I'm going to try to play like uh, I would had I not heard Todd just talk about his hand. Right, yeah. Let's play Glorybringer. Okay. Declare tax. Yeah, so we'll have to, before attackers, we're going to cast down the Glorybringer. We'll shoot for four. Down to 13. Pass the turn. What? Oh, no. Hmm. This could be better. I'm going to attack for two. 18. This could be better. And I think... I think I just passed the turn again. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, that's pretty good too. Uh, Mushu for four. Okay, I'm going to be down to nine. nine. I will play a Chandra. Ugh. Yep. So now, with Chandra on the battlefield, Champion actually does interact with me somewhat, so I'm going to make two red and I braid the Champion. And with Todd missing land drops, it's very unlikely that the Champion ever comes back. Okay, so I have an option here of Harness Lightning my own Champion in, in response to that, just to be able to gain three energy. I guess I can. I guess I can just harness lightning anything to gain yeah. energy. I can harness lightning that phoenix also. Pass the turn. Because if we draw any untapped land, we may need this energy for the black source for contempt. We're up against it though for sure. So that's okay. Um, so I'm just gonna just use this to gain three energy. Come back, Jacob. Yeah, Jacob, I need you back. <laughs> uh, oh no. Okay. Yes. All right. We have a swamp. All right. We're do we're doing it. All right, so now we get to contempt. So I think Phoenix is the more is the thing we need to contempt more than the Chandra because it's representing four as opposed to two damage this turn. So you go to eleven. Yep. So I'll go to eleven. Go ahead. Mm. Oh, uh, still in great shape here. I'll just draw a card with Chandra. Yeah, we can cast that one. Okay. And then I'll play a PNLR and get Ooh, a Thopter token. Okay. And pass the turn. So with how how that game kind of ended up, it did look worse that we discard the Siphoner instead of the Bloodfast, because those turns just playing a Siphoner would have gave us energy. We could have played our blue spell. Not use Waste of that Harness Lightning. So that did not work out too well for us. For now, I'm going to... Play a champion. Hope to hit a land drop. Nice, we got there. Let's go ahead and discard this blood fast. Well, hmm. Okay, so we need we need fifth land, and I want to keep scarab god, and I want to keep contempt. So it's really between between these. Uh, I think we have to have a removal spell this turn also. So I guess the blood fast is going to have to go, and then between these two, it doesn't really matter which one. We get rid of. I think I'm just gonna keep the abrade because I can just deal with PNLR right now before it says that I can't block or it pumps the thopter or anything like that. Okay. It's not a terrible turn for us. And once again, let's just plus Chandra. Try to get some more stuff. That's 
more stuff. That is indeed more stuff. Play a scrounger. Let's uh, play this. Get a second energy. Um, I wonder if it's best for me to just attack and offer a trade. Yeah, I think so. Attack. Okay. So we have four coming in. If we take it, we go down to seven. Um, so Chandra is definitely a, a problem. We we can't really let Chandra ultimate. So if if we take it, I can at least have champion attack Chandra. But then again, we're we'll be at seven. Because if I, I have if seven I, power, if I do that line, I can like at least play like a scarab god and, and start having that down and and maybe be able to do something with that. Uh, if I block, Scrounger's just going to come back. I'll be at 10, though, and I'll be able to Contempt, but then we're taking 6 from Scroungers. Hmm. <laughs> we're in a rough spot. I think, I think our best option of winning is probably blocking, though. Okay, you take 1, go to 10? Yep. Uh, pass the turn. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and Contempt, Chandra. Brings you to 12. Yep, up to 12, and pass turn. Uh, on your end step, I will cycle a Canyon Slew. Okay. And return Scrap Heap Scrounger. Go to my turn. Yep. Uh, attack you for 7. All right, down to 5. Pass the turn. We're doing just about like the only play we can. Let's just play Scarab God out there. Hope hope we can get there with this. Scarab God, we need you to be real good. Thank you for seven. Well, I block one, so I go down to one. Lightning strike you. No. All right, you got me. Okay, and we're here for sideboarding, and we didn't get that first game because we had like basically all these cards we want to take out in our hands. Um, Siphoner's coming out even on the play, I believe, because. We not only don't really care to lose life, but then it also is just such a uh, juicy target for Goblin Chain Whirler that will just get swept up a lot. We already have Champion of Wits. That's another one like that. It's just hard playing so many one-toughness creatures against Chain Whirler. And uh, Bloodfast, again, we don't really care to be paying a lot of life. What we have coming in is we have four pretty decent cards coming in. The uh, Chandra's Defeats are pretty obvious here. Mostly want to be hitting either Chandra or Glorybringer. Those are our best targets. And then we have Hour of Glory as another answer to Hazaret or uh, Rekindling Phoenix that we need. Doomfall the same way. Just the four mana cards that Red has are just so important and Exiling is so important. Golden Demise is the one that I'm not in love with, especially against Black Red. It's a lot better against the Mono Red variants, but when they have Scrap Heap Scrounger, they can keep coming back as like one of the main things to, to kill. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good against Pia and Kira Nalar. It can kind of team up with like an... Uh, end step removal spell and rekindling phoenix to kind of deal with the phoenix token and it, it could just kind of do a little bit for us so we'll try it out uh, on my side i'm doing the pretty typical plan here from the red decks that we've seen uh and getting more mid-rangey more attrition-y in the post board game so i'm cutting some of my one drops the soul scar mages which i think are weaker than bomet courier in this matchup because todd is not going to produce a lot of early blockers and one of his main early blockers champion of wits that trades with the courier uh, I'm cutting Heart of Kirin because I just don't like this card against Fatal Push. You end up losing a lot of tempo having to crew it into the push, and we don't have ways to protect it once it's crewed the way green decks do with Blossoming Defense. And then I'm turning a Braid as my weakest removal spell. Uh, just doesn't kill a lot of the things that we care about killing, and I'm bringing in removal spells at Exile instead uh, that will handle the Scarab God, but can also handle... Uh, Nicol Bolas. I also like that Doomfall gives us a little bit of discard. I would kind of like a duress effect in this matchup, and Doomfall does that without being a liability if you draw it late and need to answer something on the board. And then bring in extra copies of our four mana threats. The idea here is to overload Todd's exile removal with there's so many things that he needs to kill uh, with them between Chandra, Rekindling Phoenix, Hazaret, and sometimes even Glorybringer uh, if he doesn't have a cast down. So overloading on the bigger threats gearing up to play a really uh, longer sort of haymaker magic. And we're back for game two with a hand that's not amazing by any stretch, but 
Um, I like that we have all of our colors. We have a good mana base set up. And standard's the kind of format that, especially on the play, even against the red deck, you don't have to be particularly fast. Like You just want to be able to cast your spells, hit your land drops, and uh, try to have your powerful cards take over. So I think we're going to keep this. Okay. On my side, I've taken a mulligan to six, and, and I have a reasonable six that's functional and has lands and spells, so definitely a keep and a scry, and that is not a card I need. So send that one off to the bottom. Okay. Go ahead. Canyon Slew again. Yep. Ooh, that was a good draw. Bomat Courier. All right, you got me. Attack, you get a card. You're at 19. 19. Hmm. Head of pools. Go ahead. Attack another card. You got me. You're 18. Play a Kari Zev. Ooh, that's a good one. Pass. All right, so this is not looking uh, too great for us. All right, that's a, not a bad draw. Not a bad draw there. I think. So I think I'm gonna want to. I'm gonna want to have five lands. So. I think my my plan is even even with this, I'm gonna be saving this card. For, for later, and I'm, I'm going to be planning on, on going in, from here into here. So I'm going to be casting Doomfall first, and I'm going to be actually looking at your hand, because I want to take some four-mana threat that's going to be way too good. Well, I don't have one of those yet, but I do have multiple removal spells. Okay, we do have lots of removal spells, which I don't love. This is a pretty resilient hand to Doomfall. The Karis I already have in play, and if he's trying to force through a threat, I have two removal spells, both of which can... Essentially, is there anything? Hmm. Yeah, this is not great. So, I could take Carry Zev so that I kill Carry Zev the next turn, and then we're just looking at this. But then the the bow mat is kind of annoying. This is, and then the Hour of Glory is just a, a great answer here to our Scarab God. So I kind of want to take the Hour of Glory. I think I may have to do that. This Bowmat Courier is going to be pretty good, too. For how Ross's hands look, I really wish I would have Doomfall to Creature for how this hand <laughs> for, looks. But, you know, at the time, if there's like Phoenix, Hazard, at Chandra, those kind of cards, I really wanted to take those. But there's not. Yep. You got land on top and then all four drops after that. Oh, that's, that's good shuffling. <laughs> um, so I think... All right, then I'll just deal with this carries of later. I think we're going to just take the... Let's see, you can't particularly cast the Hour of Glory. In yeah, License Disintegration is a lot of... Hmm, a lot of damage that it represents. And we're going to be at a low life total, kind of taking four here and four. Actually, with the Dark Horse? Uh, <laughs> no, all right, Hour of Glory. Okay, final call. Okay, final answer. Final answer. Final response. Good after that. That's the final part of my turn. Okay, uh, let's get a Jacob Baugh and our monkey friend Ragavan and mush for four and get another card under the courier. And you go to 14. Yep. And pass the turn. All right, nice draw, nice draw. All right, so our plan here is to... So we have... We're going to go ahead and Chupacabra. I was kind of planning on Chupacabra and the, the carry Zev whenever I did this, but... The Bomat Courier is honestly just going to be getting a lot of cards, and that's actually pretty scary, especially with you having another Carry Zev. So I'm going to actually hit this Bomat Courier. And it'll force Ross to either play the Disintegration and use his energy now, or or pop it and not be able to do both. So the Chupacabra does not have much of an impact on this battlefield. It doesn't re doesn't check Carry Zev. Might soak up two damage from a Ragavan attack, and that's about it. And I don't really like my position. If I Disintegration Chupacabra, Todd goes to 11, I don't have to attack him to 8, and then I've got these two cards on the top of my deck against Todd's four cards, I don't actually think that's a good position. I think this is a turn where I need to land a good four-mana threat, and there's a decent chance if I courier these three cards away for what's ever under there, I can do that. So I'm going to sack the courier. Okay. Makes so I, sense. I drew a fourth land, which is... Yeah, nah, see. now that the Hour of Glory is gone. And, okay, I'll, I'll take that. Okay, go ahead. And let's uh, attack and get Ragavan. 
Alright, so I'm gonna go to 11. I'm not gonna block Ragavan either. And play a Chandra. You got it. And plus to exile, you're gonna take two. Brings you to nine. Yep. Pass the turn. That was a very good draw. Alright, so let's start with uh, looting here. So I'm gonna go ahead and defeat the Chandra and loot because it's a Chandra Planeswalker. So, oh, it's discard then draw. Yeah, so not, it's rummage, not loot. Yeah, so it's rummage. Um, my hand's honestly very good. I could just get rid of this land, but I'm going to want the fifth land next turn. Basically, rummaging away the land would be, I would kind of assume that one of my top two cards is a land. So it may not just be worth it. So I think, so I think I'm just going to, I'm just not going to do that. So never mind. So I'm just going to play this and I'll hit you for two. 18. And I will pass the turn. Well, Chandra's defeat was the worst case scenario. But we'll soldier on. Mush. So, yeah, going into combat, I'll push. Yep. And I will play Scrap Heap Scrounger. Okay. Pass. All right. Let's play that. And I think, yeah, I'm just going to leave Chupacabra back as well. I don't think that like the two damage, it's going to be worth it. So just in case there's another disintegration or something. Okay. Well, that is a relevant card if Todd doesn't have an answer. So uh, let's play a Rekindling Phoenix. Okay. Playing my land, so I have two mana up for Scranger in case it dies. Um, actually... Maybe I should attack. Do you want to attack with Scrounger? Uh, yeah, so attacking lets me like take creatures out of the graveyard. I don't think this game is going to go long enough to where like me running out of fuel for the Scrounger is relevant. Okay. Whereas taking cards away from the Scarab God could be. Yeah, because I can get like Bomac Courier and start yeah. putting cards under it. And pop eh, it. Cards under it is probably less relevant, but then you can't get up. multiple carry sevens. It's, it's just a creature that puts me under pressure. So, yeah. yeah, I'm going to attack and then... And just, so I'll block, he'll die. Yeah, post-combat, let's exile this. This does tap me down, so if Todd like, kills the Scrap Heap Scrounger, he can return it, but I feel like if he, if he has a removal spell or something, it's going to go with the Phoenix, so yep. it, would have, it would just be another Fatal Push that is now good. All right, so upkeep, um, trigger on the stack. We don't want to use it because we were going to use our removal spell on the Phoenix. This is a Beast Horror, not a zombie, so we do nothing. And so let's go ahead and Contempt the Phoenix. Go to 11. Go to 11. And now I think we can probably race. We have 7 here to put Ross down to 11 as well. We can probably race the Scrounger. The biggest thing is attacking here. If you draw exactly Hazaret, you get to come back for another 5. And I don't have any Contempts or anything left. That would put me down to... So that would be 8 total, putting me down to 3, where I could just be dead to a Lightning Strike. So probably, none just, of the, probably just leave back Chupacabra. Yeah, so that none of that sounds great. So I'm going to leave back Chupacabra just in case. Well, like, what about Glorybringer also? That would be seven, put me down to four. Maybe I'll just leave them both. No, I think that's fine. If you have Glorybringer, I think that's fine. Thirteen. All right, go ahead. Yeah, you definitely want to pressure me to some degree. Right. It can't just let you sit back and have infinite draws. Yeah. Um... So now I don't want to attack with Scrounger because Todd Trading puts his own Chupacabra in the graveyard. Um, and then he just gets to return it and kill what I'm playing here. So I'll just play a Chain Whirler. You right. go to 10. Yep. Pass the turn. All right, now upkeep. I think we can go ahead and exile something. So we just want a, a land for that. So let's go ahead and get a carry Zeph. That's the only creature. And then you'll lose lose one, go down to 12. Yes. And I'll try one. And that's a land. We'll just go ahead and take this. Play that, and I guess we attack on in there again. So we're at 10, and we have a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, so I'm going to attack with both of those, and before damage, I'm going to upgrade the Chain Whirler. So hit you for I go 5. Yep, hit you down to 5. Go ahead. And that was land. I am dead. Yep. Okay, we're here for game three. I am now on the play, which is nice. And I mean, this hand is not particularly fast, but the post board games I don't think are about being fast necessarily. And we have a pretty powerful hand, so I'm going to keep. 
yeah, kind of same here. I would much rather be on the play with this hand, and I could I could definitely get run over. But this doesn't really look like one that I'd mulligan. Even you know, game three, you know, at the open where got to win. I think this is good enough to keep. Okay, mountain pass. All right, canyon slew. Go ahead. My favorite turn one play. Dragon skull summit pass. Uh, this is working very well for us, and especially with that we didn't have. Um, a turn two play until now, but uh, this is looking exactly what we wanted to see. And step, cycle sleep. Yep. Okay. Play a chain whirler. Take one. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, you have an essence scatter. Yeah, drew an essence scatter. So I'm going to go ahead and scatter that so that it sets Pass. up our discard here with the doom fall. All right, I'm going to go ahead and doom fall your hand. Oh, that's not good. Okay, disintegration. Fe All right, so we're definitely taking Phoenix, and then yeah, that looks like Ross's draws have probably not worked out too well for him mm -hmm. so drawing, far. Drawing these three cards between two draw steps in a cycle. Yeah, so not exactly what you wanted at all. All right, go ahead. Pass the turn. All right, so now it's time for us to play the new big baddie of the set. Nicol Bolas, the Ravager. So ETB, discard a card. And go ahead. And a turn. Disintegration it. Okay. So Nicol Bolas died, but that's fine. It did its job. Got two cards out. Okay, that is not a bad draw. Um, play a hub, get a Jacob. Mm -hmm. Hope Todd doesn't have a Chandra's defeat. I do not. I do not have a contempt. That's a that's definitely a good one. Take two, here. go to eighteen. Pass. But we're gonna have another. We're gonna have a really good turn ourselves. We'll lead off with the Aether Hub as well. I like how you had a Jacob Bob. I was jealous. And it's like one of my favorite things about Nicol Bolas. We have a Liliana, or even though it died, we get to Liliana minus three. Get it back. You have to discard a card again. And pass turn. And thankfully, Chandra cannot kill our Liliana anymore with the new rule change. Yep, that's not good. Um, now, it can kill Nicol Bolas, though. Yep, so I'm going to minus three to deal with the Nicol Bolas, take okay. the heat off of it, and play my Scrap Heap Scrounger. Okay. Pass. Maybe I'm supposed to hold a land there on that last turn. So we'll get more Whatever. information. First thing we're going to do is make a zombie, mill two cards. Lincoln of Eye and Heart Lightning. Yeah, I think it, if I hold a land there, I'm in much better shape. That was a mistake. Hmm. The Nicol Bolas Liliana combo will definitely be a thing. Yeah. So that's that's what we're doing. We're learning. Um, all right, so we're going to have you. So I could just jam Scarab God here, but I kind of want to just have Ross exile a creature and then hold up another removal spell. But it's very possible. Like, this line is not good at all against a Hazaret or even just a Phoenix or anything like that. I think it's best just to get the Scarab God down. Yeah, let's, it's probably just best just to get Scarab God down. All right, go ahead. Um, hmm. Kind of interesting. Probably not good enough. Uh, it's plus Chandra to exile. Hmm. I don't think that actually does anything because I have a Chain Whirler in my graveyard that Todd can bring back with the Scarab God. Right, it'd be like one attack and then sack it. So it's basically like a redraw for like red. So you can either do two damage or like pay one mana. I guess two mana Yeah, I total. guess it does still just draw a card. Yeah, like you would just want to sack no. it this turn. You'd have to like pay the one to cast it and the one so that would take out two of your mana. Yeah, turn. but then Todd can just bring back the Nickel Bolas and get back the... and. Uh, get the card I draw. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah, because then the Nicol Bolas makes you discard it. That's a good point. So, the, the, the two creatures in the graveyard stop both sides of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, so just two to me. Um, yeah, you go to 16. Yep. Pia, get a token... Um. Yeah, this game just. Yeah, like your your first few draws were just very poor 
before. No, I just needed to hold. If I hold the land for the rebuy on Nicol Bolas, I think I'm okay. I can strike Liliana. Yeah, then I get to strike Liliana, and uh, you don't have a zombie here. The Scarab God is still definitely a problem. Passing to me. Um, so one thing is the Scarab God doesn't work that well with Nicol Bolas. Whenever you, if you reanimate it with the Scarab God, you can't do the second ability because the second ability of Nicol Bolas exiles it and then returns it. But you'll just have, have a token of the creature. So uh, I'll uh, I'll attack Liliana with Scrounger. Okay, and I will go ahead and block. Okay, and then I'm gonna get rid of this Chain Ruler so you can't get it back and bring back Scrounger. Pass. Okay. Upkeep. I'll just go ahead and draw. Oh wait. Oh, I guess I still have a zombie. Never mind, because I think I'm so used to that. But I'm gonna scry yeah. this to the top. You lose one. Nineteen. I'm gonna still take this card and then. That was still a very good card to draw. It would say Vras's Contempt for the Chandra. Down to eighteen. 18. Yep. Yeah. And I'm gonna just go ahead and cash in Liliana, and get Nicol Bolas back. Uh, and might as well serve in there for five. Fourteen. Go ahead. Okay, need some good ones here. That does not count. Um, attack with Thopter token. Don't attack with Scrounger also. I guess, well, you, yeah, no, you don't want it to die, and then I, yeah, okay, I gotcha. Um, well, I'm going to block with Nicol Bolas, because I don't want to take all the damage. Pump three times. Yep, you pump three times, and I'll just go ahead and use a cast down on it. Sure. Can't really cast down the Pia. I don't really care to get the Scrounger. Yes. All right, upkeep. I have one zombie, so you lose one. Go to 13. Yep. Scry. I would like a, another land for this Nicol Bolas. But maybe I'll just keep on getting removal spells. No, let's get a land. See if we get a land. Yeah. All right, so combat. I'll attack with everything. What does the backside of this thing do? Uh, it is... Draw two cards, 10 damage to a creature or planeswalker. Yep, or um, uh, it can reanimate a creature or planeswalker from any graveyard. Or is it just creature? I think it's just creature. Yeah, just creature from any graveyard. There it is. Found it. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, just a creature. Or Planeswalker. It is a creature or a Planeswalker from a graveyard. Hmm. I will block the zombie. Okay. So go to four. Zombie down. Take nine. Go to four. Second main. We'll pay the seven mana. Turn Nicol Bolas the Ravager into Nicol Bolas the Arisen. And... Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and minus four and just get PNLR. Get my own doctor. Go ahead. I am dead. Yep. All right, we're back here for the conclusion here for Grixis midrange versus uh, Red Black midrange. And I guess it would be Red Black aggro probably. That makes They're sense all the same that. name. They're yeah. all the same deck. Yeah. Um, so we chain saw Whirler it. Control. Yep, Chain Whirler Control. We saw your draws there. Especially that third game. You know, the second game you were on a mulligan and had like the slower hand with like the double carry Zev, which was kind of awkward where you couldn't like deploy so another threat. I went turn one Bowmat, turn two carry Zev. Right. But then you just didn't have anything else, basically. Um, I mean, I passed on turn three with a removal spell up and decided to activate the Bowmat. Yeah, activate Bowmat instead of killing the Chupacabra. Um, and then. I mean, I found I, my goal there was to find a four mana threat that to start generating an advantage. I found one, but you just had the answer to it. Yeah. Um, and then from there, like flood a little, a little bit, I guess. Um, and then game three, maybe I'm supposed to mulligan that hand. That's a little bit slow on the play. I went turn two cycle, turn three chain whirler. I had Phoenix ready for turn four, but you doomfalled it. Um, and from there, I just wasn't really able to muster anything. You had yeah. Uh, Nick, you went turn two, Essence Scatter, turn three, Doomfall, turn four, Nicol Bolas, turn five, Liliana, my Nicol Bolas. Yeah, my curve worked out Scarab really God. well <laughs> so, there, that game three. I mean, that that's just a really strong draw from uh, from your deck. So, yeah. 
I started with the with the two Doom Falls and the Nickel Bolts and the Scarab God. And yeah, I drew the Essence Scatter perfectly on time. So like if you had like a carry Zev with like that hand or you know, just something earlier, I guess I would have been able to Doom Fall it still, but yeah, it just it really lined up very well for me there. Yeah. I mean whenever you curve two two through five with your most powerful plays on every step. I mean, that's going to work out pretty well. <laughs> yep. um, and when you play three colors, you get to play a lot of powerful cards. Yeah. One of the things that has made the red decks and red-black decks so good is that there's such a high density of powerful red cards that they get to uh, play a deck that doesn't really sacrifice much in power but has a great mana base because it's one, one and a half colors. Mm -hmm. um, and, and other decks, in order to match that power, have to play a lot of colors, and that means they're going to stumble more often. And we saw like, you, you stumbled there a little in game one, and yep. I was able to take advantage. Um, so the, the the Grixis deck certainly competes on power. Whether the mana base is going to hold up over a, a larger sample size is something that I'd be a little bit worried about, mm -hmm. especially with the way you have it configured. I mean, you have like sprays, pushes, essence scatters, a lot of different colors <laughs> at the low end of the curve. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you need to um, th think about that a little bit more and be more two colors splash the third. Maybe the mana base just works. And if that's the case, the cards are definitely powerful enough to compete in these mid-range wars. Uh, Nicol Bolas is quite good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it has looked very good. Has and, looked very and good. it's very good with, with Liliana. I do like yeah. the play this, you discard a card, they keep their removal spell, kill your 4-4, four, four, and you Liliana get it back. Though I assume most of the removal spells that are going to kill it are going to exile it. Yeah, a lot of them with, with like, yeah, with Ixalan's Binding cast out, Vrass's Contempt, Contempt, that kind yeah, of stuff. Doomfall and, and yeah. Our Glory. All, um, Disintegration is sort of the one exception, so of course that's the one I had. <laughs> yeah, that that is true. It does... It uh it does get will get exiled a lot, but um I do like that the fourth point of toughness does get it out of strike a braid range. Which I love is the that most common removal spell. So I think it is going to stabilize the battlefield in a lot of matchups. It doesn't match up great against um Phoenix. kindling Phoenix, yeah. but it is a dragon itself, so it does not get uh cannot be targeted by Glorybringer. That's another important point to note. So yep. a pretty resilient body all in all, being four toughness and having uh having a dragon type. <laughs> yeah, so that that actually those are. Uh, important. And so yeah, how you're talking about the mana base, you saw like my, my keeps game two and three, I didn't have anything but Doomfall, like just like my first play either one, but my mana was good. And so like that's just like really important when you're playing like these three color decks, just to make sure your your mana is good, like when you're keeping a hand. Yeah, and uh, on the play, your first play is Doomfall is probably fine. Uh, I had one drop, two drop on the draw, your first play was Doomfall still, and it, you were able to handle that pretty easily. Because, I mean, these red decks, they're not like the red deck from last year that was hyper-aggressive with Oncrop Crasher. Right. Sometimes you see red decks like that. But the, the way that most of them are built really is mid-range decks. So you're not, you, you need to get out of that normal mindset playing against red and start treating them more like a Jun deck. Yep. Cool. Well, so that was uh, our first look at Corset uh, 2019 today. Uh, Nickel Bowls look pretty good. Pretty good. But for the rest of the week, we have uh, Modern on t tomorrow and Thursday. And then we'll have two more standard matches on Wednesday and Friday. We're going to be trying out different different decks. So I'm going to actually not be playing Nickel Bowls again this week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the only time this week. And uh, for the most part, we have like some tough matchups. Tomorrow, uh, you have Spirits, right, against... Um, you're going to be trying out Spirits with like the new Spirit Lord against Jeskai. So that's that's going to be a tough matchup with like all the, all the removal all the and cheap everything. removal, yeah. We'll see yeah. how it goes. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. All right, everybody, check that out tomorrow. But uh, that's going to be it for us today. For Ross Merriam, I'm Todd Stevens, and thanks for watching the Verse Series here on StarCityGames.com.